my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my most disappointing books of 2020, which is really interesting for me because I've never made this video in the past. Usually I've been satisfied enough with my reading experience that I don't usually feel the need to make this video, but there were some books that really disappoint me this year and so I felt like I had enough to make a video on it. I think it might just be like a testament to the fact that I branched out my reading tastes a little bit, tried some things that were new and some of them just were not for me. So let's just get into it. I think I have about like six books to talk about here today. Obviously disclaimer like these are just my opinions so I don't know don't like be upset about it. Hmm. But they're my opinions so that's it. Okay, so I'm just going to go in chronological order of when I read them this year, so there's no like most disappointing, least disappointing view because they were all equally disappointing. The first disappointing book I read this year was The Queen's Assassin by Melissa De La Cruz. Now this one I had a lot of hope for. It's done like a really cool setup for a YA. It's about a deadly assassin and his mysterious apprentice. Calden Holt is the Guild of Assassins most deadliest assassin. Um, and no one can best him, and he is bound to the queen. And the queen asks him to make an impossible vow to find the missing Danan scrolls. So Shadow has been training her whole life to follow in the footsteps of her mother and aunts to come skilled enough to join the ranks of the Assassin's Guild. Magic has been forbidden since an uprising, so Shadow must train her skills in secret. So when a surprise attack brings Shadow and Cal together, they are teamed up as Assassin and Apprentice to hunt down a sinister new threat to Renovia. So like this just had such a promising premise. It sounded really cool, like you have to team up and she like basically weasels her way into being his apprentice. The execution did not go very well and I found that just like the the worst thing about this book was the fact that it was just like not written very well. Like it just it just falls flat in so many aspects and it's so sad because it's so promising, but the ex it was just not executed that well. I think like one of the aspects that was like really jarring is the fact that we have dual perspectives which normally I'm fine with dual perspectives but the perspectives were in different tenses and that did not serve any sort of storytelling purpose. If you are going to do something stylistically weird with your writing there should be some sort of way that it serves the story in my opinion. For example the footnotes in Nevernight actually end up being like really important to the story. They also add like sparks of humor and stuff to the book so I don't find a personal problem with the footnotes. But this stylistic choice just made no sense to me. It just made it very choppy. Like maybe maybe it was just there to like differentiate the voices, but no, it just it just made it really hard to get into the book because we're thinking that these things are happening like unfolding sequentially and yet one is past and one is present voice and they're flip-flopping back and forth and it just did not work for me. That was the the biggest drawback. And I just felt like it was just very surface level. Like we were just being told everything that was happening, like we weren't experiencing it. Just kind of felt like a like a bare bones almost outline. Like that's like I hate to say that, but that's kind of like how the the writing felt to me. Like I felt like we didn't really like get into it at all. And there was insta love and you know, like I can be forgiving with like insta lust and like all that, but it was insta love like they met like a week ago and now they're professing their undying love for one another that they would go to the ends of the earth for each other. And I'm like, where did this relationship develop? Because I was I was not there when it happened. So I just it's it's disappointing too because I felt like the bones of a really promising and strong novel were there. It just was not fleshed out enough to become like fully realized as a concept in a book enough for me to feel like it was everything that it could have been like I just felt like it didn't live up to its potential and that's really disappointing okay the next book that I was disappointed by I have my my good reads here that's why I'm looking at my phone was Credence by Penelope Douglas um so I decided to try a dark bully romance and here's the thing with romances and sometimes they're dark and the characters exhibit behaviors that we would not normally find acceptable. And I think in those kinds of situations, people have certain lines of what they are comfortable with reading um, and what they enjoy. Because obviously fantasy is a way to live out things that, I don't know, you probably wouldn't partake in regular life. So I'm not judging anyone if this is something that you enjoyed or this is to your taste. But like I just found that my particular line with dark romances was drawn before this book because it just wasn't for me it just wasn't for me so 
in this romance, dark romances, because I've read other romances that are like, have some pretty dark themes and like toxic behaviors and I'm okay with reading them in certain situations, but like this one didn't work for me. So we have Karen de, de Haas is the only child of a famous film couple. And so she's grown up with wealth and privilege, but no love or guidance. And so when her parents die, both of them, she is shipped off to live with a distant family. It's her father's stepbrother, and she's shipped off to live with him and his two sons. And they live in the middle of nowhere, Colorado, in this cabin. And from there, like, they take her under their wings and they teach her to work and survive in the remote woods, far away from the rest of the world. And then she realizes that lines blur and rules become easy to break when no one else is watching. So yeah, definitely 18 plus. But like, it just wasn't for me. I can understand the appeal for some people, but it just wasn't for me. I like honestly don't even know what more I can say about this book. I don't have any other cohesive thoughts on that, but I haven't read any of other any of Penelope Douglas's other books and I've heard that her other works are better, so maybe I will check them out in the future, but the dynamics in this one just made me a little bit uncomfortable and I didn't like it. Next disappointing book book is The Betrothed by Kira Cass, another one that I wanted to love and then didn't. <laughs> oh, I end up giving this one like one star. I'm not really giving star ratings, like most of these star ratings you consume are one or two stars. So we follow Hollis who is basically like no nobility so she is living in the castle and her family has basically always wanted her to strive for greatness but nothing she does is good enough for them. King Jameson declares his love for Hollis and Hollis is overjoyed she's going to be the queen but she soon realizes that like with his attentions it's a little bit shallow and she doesn't know if she's really cut out for a life as a royal. And then when the visit from a king of Isolte, like Hollis sees a chance to prove that to Jameson and herself that she like can really be the queen. But then when she meets an Isolte stranger with the mysterious power to see right into her heart, she finds a future that she wants is never one that she dared to dream. Okay. So this like is set up to be like very scandalous, right? Like we have this woman who is betrothed to the king. So she's basically like in line to be queen. And then she finds her like true love. And so like that's like royal scandal set in like a medieval time period always promises to be a very good read. Like I love those kind of like royal noble kind of things and um, it almost makes me think of the, uh, uh, what's it called? The White Queen by Philippa Gregory, which is based off of like a true story. Like those are very good like historical dramatizations, let's say. So this, but this isn't based on anything in real life. Okay. If you, if you, we're going to be queen and basically have everything that you've ever wanted handed to yourself and you are going to give that up for love you have to like at least be convincing that you are in love because i did not see any chemistry between these two characters it's set up to be a love story which so there's supposed to be so much tension because she's the soon-to-be queen and he's just like some commoner and no like no like there was just no tension between them there was not enough even if she was like unsure about being queen it could have been like oh there's this possibility that i could like find love with the stranger so i'm like not gonna be queen but it wasn't even like that like she just like left the king for this dude and like they they had like three interactions up to that point and i'm like like in some of their interactions but they just locked eyes like just because you lock eyes with someone you think is cute doesn't mean you're gonna like just throw your life away i don't know like there were, like there was such a potential to have such like a spicy and tension-filled romance with so much angst like what is she gonna do is she gonna leave the king for this guy that she thinks is like her true love and it was just not there there was just nothing to convince me that hollis was so in love with this other guy that she was just gonna leave the king and to be honest, like her and the king through their like kind flirting had like just as much chemistry as her and this like other random commoner dude. Like, oh my god, it's just so disappointing because I wanted it to be good. I wanted it to see the spice, the tension, the angst. And there was nothing there. And then the ending just made me scratch my head. I'm like, what did I just read? That ending made no sense to, to the plot whatsoever. 
no sense. It was just like, oh my God, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating when you read a book and you're just like expecting this one thing and then you just get nothing of that. You get nothing of that. Okay, moving on to the next disappointing book. Um, we have Shine by Jessica Jung. Okay, so if you are not into K-pop, this is written by an ex-member of the K-pop group Girls' Generation, SNSD. I'm not like super into them. I do like K-pop, but they are a little bit before the time that I was super into K-pop. Jessica left the group. It said that she left the group to like focus on her fashion brand and then she needed more time, like focus on that kind of stuff, like some sort of like full excuse. Like I definitely think she was forced out of the group and it's like bitter about it now. And oh my God, when I posted my review, some like Jessica stands came after me, which is... That was, I was not expecting that. Anyways, so I read this arc and I was so excited. I'm like, it's gonna be like a fun K-pop novel. <sighs> and it, mm, okay, so this is a fictional story, shall, shall we say, of a Korean American teen who moves to Korea to be a K-pop idol. And so she's like going to give up everything to basically like be an idol and like make all these sacrifices and stuff which if you're into k-pop you know like how intense the training process is like it's no joke and the the standards that they have for idols are like absolutely insane like they you basically like, you are not allowed to date anyone or like you have to be perfect all the time so like i can totally understand those industry standards so then she begins to develop feelings for k-pop star and her company is golden boy and then it's just He's the first person that finally understands like how badly she wants it. Okay, so I was expecting that I was going to get some sort of book that like exposed the industry for what it was, but had some sort of like meaning, like positive meaning of like empowerment and being true to yourself. And what I got out of it is that it was like a thinly veiled memoir that was like attacking everyone else and that the main character Rachel took no blame that anything was her fault at all, even though she like completely like acted in inappropriate ways at times and her whole mentality like the way that the book ended too is like i'm gonna show everyone that i'm better than them because i am and it was just like not like that <laughs> and there was just so much girl on girl hate and i think the thing that really bothered me about it is that i could definitely tell that this sort of girl on girl hate like transcended into real life and like, okay, K-pop groups, like, manufacture this image that they're BFFs and blah, blah, blah. And I'm sure in some cases that's true. And, and I'm sure that every group has their own issues. But, like, the way she wrote this book, it was just so, it was just girl hate everywhere. And it had, like, no sort of resolution. And she, like, basically implied that other members in the company were, like, sleeping with executives and, like, doing all this. And it just felt like a dirty laundry list. But like not direct enough that it could like actually be like, oh my god, I'm reading this like tell-all memoir, it's crazy, she's spilling all the tea. Like it's it's thinly veiled attempts to like make jabs at other people that she worked with in the past with the message of I'm better than you at the end of it. Like I just was like, what am I supposed to get out of this book? Because I did not, like I walked away from that like, oh, like it made me, it turned me like away from like even wanting to get into SNSD because it's like uh, it just left such a bad taste in my mouth such a bad taste and like i will say like it did expose some of the like sexist and misogynistic behavior that is very well and truly there in the industry and that is definitely something that does need to be exposed so that is a good talking point for this book but it just got like so overwhelmed and drowned out by like that I'm better than everyone else, these other girls suck because of this, blah 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 mentality that it just killed, it just killed it for me. Next disappointing read is My Summer of Love and Misfortune by Lindsay Wong and this is an arc that I got at ALA and I just kind of picked it up because I wanted something like easy breezy to read and it seemed fun. It's about a Chinese American teen who is thrust into the world of Beijing high society when she's sent away to spend the summer in China. So her parents basically send her away to like reconnect with her culture and go live with her aunt, or her aunt, uncle, and cousin and it just was not good. It just was not good because the character Iris was insufferable. She made everyone around her miserable and took no no sort of like blame or felt anything about her actions. Like she was just like, oh, like it's this person's fault and this person's fault. It was not written with any sort of redeeming qualities even throughout the whole novel. Like I waited the whole novel for her to get better and she just was awful the whole time. 
she just was like so selfish to the point that she lacked self-awareness to even be aware that she was the problem and it was just never addressed for the whole novel so she started the novel and ended the novel with like the same sort of mentality and i felt like she learned nothing so yeah the main character killed that one for me the last book that i have to talk about is the damned by renee Audier, and i'm so sad about this one and this one wasn't disappointing because it was like necessarily a bad book but because it was just so off the mark of what i was expecting so in the beautiful it's set in the 1800 new orleans and we follow Celine rossio as she is escaping france to head to new orleans and she gets drawn to the nightlife of the Le Cour de Lyons, and there's some supernatural happenings going on in New Orleans. There are a string of murders going on, and when the murderer focuses on Celine, she realizes that this she can use this to her advantage to maybe help solve the murders and give the victims justice, and I don't know. So basically, vampires, New Orleans, 1800 setting. And the way that the book, first book ended, it ended on a pretty big trope that I'm has to be done very well for me to like it, and it was not done well enough in this case that I liked it. It's just so sad. So like the thing that really killed this book for me is that it just, the tone shifted so much from the first book that the setting at, of the 1800s New Orleans was really what sold me on the first book. I just like loved those kinds of vibes, like that feeling the setting gave us and then everything just changed in the second book and we're like somewhere else and Celine is not even in the book until the 30% mark and it just made it really hard to read and I just wanted to love it so badly and I didn't. And I think because I love the first book so much, that's what disappointed me about the second book is because it was so different and we really weren't getting like, I just like loved Celine's character and without her for like a good chunk of the novel, like it really just fell flat for me. And the follow-up just didn't feel cohesive. So yeah, I just felt like this was a very big misstep in the series and therefore it ended up on my most disappointing books of the year list. And with that, that's all I have for now, uh, for this year. I mean, out of all the books I read, only a few of them were disappointing enough that I felt like I needed to include them in this video. So I guess that's pretty good. So let's hope I don't have to make a video like this again next year. Maybe I'll just read all books that don't disappoint me in 2021. We'll see. But that's all for now. Have some fun, read some books, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.